Bum 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 and good evening. If you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, well, hey, kind of expected that this early. Most people don't show up for a couple minutes, but what I have is the uh, another day same kitties I'm going to be doing yet another figure for my Kickstarter and yet yet another thing of side characters in this case specifically Roland one of the giants I'm going to be sculpting for the Kickstarter is Farragut from the Horn of Roland so who better to include with him than Roland himself. And well, let's see if this helps things. Yeah, it does. It helps a lot. Wow. Yeah, turn on some lights. Okay. So. What I'm doing is waiting on people to show up. Yep. And as usual, you know, like I said, if you're watching this on YouTube later, like, subscribe, bell, the usual, blah blah. And we're, you know, I'm sponsored by AnyCubic, makers of the Photon, which is, in all seriousness, easy mode for printing miniatures. It has its issues, but don't we all? Don't we all? Yes, no kitty. Now, being somewhere in between historical and fantasy, because you know Charlemagne existed, uh, but the events of the Horn of Roland obviously didn't didn't occur. I'm going to be combining the fictional and hello Kim as the title says I'm doing Roland today from the from the uh, Horn of Roland one of the paladins of Charlemagne hey Shinji yeah kitty kisses oh look at that he give me kitty kisses My kitties love me. Anyway, uh, it's the parlam the Paladins of Charlemagne. It's where we get the the term Paladin. It's Roland, Orlando, and more. Um, anyway, the giant in this myth is Farragut. Farragut, like as is usual with many of these more poetic issues it's he's his actual size is kind of vague the I mean in one place he's so large that his hand covers a mountain in another Roland can poke him in the belly without reaching up too high so in my version of Farragut he's just a hill giant with fighter levels and the Battlemaster path with techniques and armor and a two-handed sword. So, as his you know, included bonus, a classic fantasy paladin, Roland. And again, like I said, since we know Charlemagne existed, but we also know that the events of the Horn of Roland are myth. Roland himself kind of sits in a in a gray zone where he's not quite pure fantasy but he's not quite historical as Shinju clambers into my lap 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rather generic paladin, but with elements that are of the known, you know, the, the, the Roland story. For example, he's not. I'm not going to have him have a shield simply for the sake of posing. He's going to have, excuse me, his sword is going to be more fantasy style. Uh, if you're familiar with the so-called El Cid sword, I'm going to make it in that style simply because it's more fluted and flowy. And hello, Andy. Uh, and then, you know, the armor is going to be classic fantasy plate. Shinju. I don't need you in my lap right now. I'm getting ready to broadcast. Come on up here. No, don't you even think about it, Fuzzbutt. <sighs> this is what happens when you have a 12-year-old cat who's just daddy's girl. You know? Anyway. So, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull up the Wikipedia article on Roland. Now, odds are... Yep, it took me straight to the legendary figure. Um, theoretically, he died in 778. Um, this means that it was long before any form of plate armor, but during the height of mail. <clears throat> the only historical mention is in Charlemagne's biographer Einhard's work, Vita Caroli Magni. He refers to him as Prefect of the Borders of Brittany, France's territory, border territory against the Britons. And this is not Britain, it's Breton. Um, the only passage is while he was vigorously pursuing the Saxon war, almost without a break, and after he placed garrisons at selected part points along the border, Charles marched into Spain with as large a force as he could mount. His army passed through the Pyrenees, and he received the surrender of all towns and fortified places he encountered. He was returning to Francia with his army safe and intact, but high in the Pyrenees, he briefly experienced the Basques. That place is so thoroughly covered in forests, it's a perfect spot for ambush, was forced by the narrow terrain to proceed in a long line, and it was there that the Basques ambushed them. They had the advantage because of the lightness of their weapons and the nature of the terrain, while the Franks were disadvantaged. Egghard, overseer of the king's table, Anselm, the count of the palace, and Roland, lord of the Britain March, died in the skirmish. That is the only mention of Roland in actual verified history. <coughs> Now, in his legend, uh, uh, histori Historia Caroli Magni, you know, the history of the great uh, Charlemagne, Caroli Magni, Charlemagne, uh, it includes his battle with uh, Feracutus or Ferragut. Um, In some versions, he's the same person as Orlando, and others are different. Let's see what we can find out about... Let's just Google... Depictions of Roland. Is there anything more than just Fantasy Night? Cultural depiction of Charlemagne. All right. Nope. Nothing really that I can find. One thing that is interesting is that in the... And hello, suit log. One thing that's interesting is that since Roland and Orlando are kind of intermixed, 
one or the other is known as having a hippogriff mount. Explicitly a hippogriff. Because it was used as a metaphor. Because in, in lore, griffins ate horses. It was their primary food. So the idea of a griffin mating with a horse was considered the, even more ridiculous than the idea of actually having a griffin. So, hello Mark, TJ. But yeah, so Roland had a hippogriff mount. Now, since I can either depict him the way an 8th century warrior would be depicted, which basically would mean he looked just like the Norse warrior I made last week. Or, I can depict him as a cliché paladin. Now, since his great enemy was Farragut, who was, he, he pierced through the navel with a spear, we're going to give him a spear. That makes sense to y'all? No, it does to me. <laughs> well, the problem with 3D printed mounts for me at this point in time is making the mount itself would take a lot of ep time and I need to find a, a time when I can devote to doing it. Oh, that's just... She's got her tail curled over her paw. That's what that dark spot is. Go figure. You never know sometimes, eh? Isn't that right? little baby girl. Yeah. This is a daddy's girl. She's about to be 13 in just a few months. Anyway. What I'm going to do is before I start doing the actual figure. I'm going to make a couple extra props. I'm going to make a new spear, and I'm going to make a sword at his belt. Two, two props. So we'll be actually doing a little bit of weapon work today. In order to do that, we got to do this. And here we go with, you know, 3D Studio Max. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a standard basic spear uh, prop. Props. Do, 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 do I have an older spear? Oh, it's a measuring spear. Measuring spear? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's not what we want. It was a, I, it was a spear I had made explicitly for a another the the uh the the barbarian chief spear person thing okay so we're gonna go to morph one because that's the one where i made the spears larger import okay that is a very simple spear but it's also eh kind of eh so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to select that shrink it down and delete that is going to be Roland's spear haft. And I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit longer because we want it to be, you know, a heroic spear. And what will happen is it will actually be inside the uh, socket. Actually, it... Uh, Considering the way sockets worked back then, I need to bring this forward to there. Bring this forward. And shrink it. And then you know, I need to make it a little bit longer because we need to make it kind of a fancy socket. Then I'm going to select this edge. I hit, oh, you can't probably can't see it because of my head. Can you, can you see it despite my head? Yeah, you can see it. Okay. I'm going to hit over here, loop, and that selects the entire loop right here. 
I'm going to chamfer and by making a very small chamfer I'm basically putting protecting edges on either side of that one I just did the end result as you can see over here it shades it as if it was an actual hard edge or harder and I hit I'm going to go ahead and go to the end here and we're gonna bring it down to nothing collapse then I'm going to select that edge and loop and I'm going to go back and do the same chamfer I did before okay now I have the socket ready now the thing is if I want this to be a heroic spear I need something more than just a simple stick as the handle I also need something more than just a simple blade on the end so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start off by making the actual basic uh, socket and I'm going to do that by making an actual cone and this cone will be what the whole spear will be attached to now I've got to move it forward there and now I'm making the height a lot higher so that it's yeah like that I'm going to drop the height segments to one but I'm going to increase the cap to two and the sides down to twelve the reason for this the reason I'm doing it like that level potty is because now if I did not let me go ahead and turn on edge spaces if I did not have the caps at two not only would this loop not be here but instead of being made up of quads and triangles it would be made up of one single 12 sided polygon which is not a good thing it, 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 it most 3d renderers don't like it so I'm going to select this edge here and this edge back here and loop and now I'm going to chamfer them at 0 .001 0 .001 and 2 because if you look at it let me go ahead and undo the edge spaces this end here kind of rounded a bit well by making those sharper and by giving even more protecting edges when I hit mesh smooth the angle becomes stays very 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 sharp and looks more like where this is sanded wood this is metal collapse all now for the blade it's going to be kind of almost like a sword blade it's going to be you know almost like in Warhammer how their spears are so funky delic especially the elves also I need to go ahead this is the change the color of it that's the shaft negative 13.228 so okay I got a 13.228 now and then the Z 15.999 15.989 no 15.999 there you couldn't see it but it evens it out you want it as centered as possible now we're gonna pull out here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a box and this box is gonna be about as wide as the well there now it didn't come out very large but that's okay and it's gonna start right about well let's bring this back up 15.999 and 13.228 or negative 13.228 
Now, so it's starting off, we actually need to pull it back some, because it's going to be coming out of, uh, no, let's bring it forward and narrow it. Select those, and bring it in narrower than, okay. Now we're going to select these and bring them back until they vanish into the ferrule, as it's called. Okay, they've vanished into the ferrule. But now we need to grab the tip, and we need to make it make our blade. Now, as you can see here, each box is about 10 millimeters in scale. To eye high, he's 32 millimeters. So we want this to be almost as long, or about as long, as a sword blade. Now, I know my height and my arm width. This blade is almost exactly from my shoulder, the bone of my shoulder, to the tip of my finger. Like that. Which, by the way, is the most comfortable range for me to swing at. So, what I'm going to do, I've got that, I know how long that is, I'm going to put that into proportion, but oh wait, it doesn't look right on a miniature scale. So I'm going to make it just a little bit longer. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to select this way. The basic shape I want is I want it to come forward, arc in a little bit, cut in a little bit, and then have a leaf shape after that. Again, in, in, admittedly inspired by many of the Games Workshop elf figures. Connect. So I'm going to do these one at a time. The first one connects way down here. Okay. The second one We're going to pull back. This is going to be where it widens out. Then we're going to connect again, but we're going to chamfer it. The reason for this is this will be the area where it cuts back in. In this case, it'll be cutting back in because it won't have a it, it won't have a blade edge on it. Actually, we're going to bring it forward a little bit. Okay. And we're coming here, and we're going to connect. We're going to chamfer this one, too, but we're going to make it a little bit wider. And these will be made just a little bit wider. Actually, we're going to deal with that, make that wider in just a minute. Okay. We're going to have one more here, but it's going to have a different purpose. You'll see what it is in just a second. What well, Now I've got to go up here, and I connect. Now, with that connected, I remove this, and I disconnect that. I then chamfer and bring it in, because that's going to be the fuller. Okay, now I'm going to select there, deselect the ones below, and collapse. Okay, I'm going to select here and deselect the ones above. Collapse. There, now we've got that but we need to buttress that somehow so what we're going to do we're going to do that after we've done our basic for what's left so now what we do let's go ahead and select right here and let's deselect the tip and the end of the fuller and we're going to bring them down quite a lot dig them dig them in deep but you notice it doesn't look right here 
We also want to make sure that it doesn't go quite as deep as the edge of the uh, ferrule. Now, let's make it a little bit... Okay. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to grab just these two, we're going to bring them in a little bit. Okay. Now, we're going to select these guys here and I'm going to loop. And that selects the edges of our fuller. And I'm going to chamfer them just one at point zero zero one. Okay. Now I'm going to go down here to the edge and make sure that I don't have any duplicated vertices. I'm not worried about the ones on the back. Uh, just to make sure that the ones on the back don't make don't be too much of a problem. I'm just going to put a fortifying edge back there with it. So even after I mesh smooth, it won't do anything. Now, I'm going to go ahead, select these. I hit F12. And I'm going to change the X to 1%. I'm not welding them. I'm changing the X to 1%. And I'm going to grab these and pull them forward. By these, I mean the ones on top and bottom. Now, I select these. And these. I'm going to pull them out a little bit. So that we get the leaf shape I'm looking for. I'm going to pull these back to here. Pull this one back to here. Actually we need to pull them both way back. And these will actually be even wider. Then these will come out like that. Now I need to go ahead and add in one more. And by pulling it forward, I'm exaggerating that leaf bend right here. And now I want to go ahead and make sure I'm getting the right spot. Okay, from there. Selecting all the way to there. That's where the edge is going to be, guys. And the way I'm going to do the edge, I'm going to extrude by local normal. And then I'm going to shrink until it's not too unrealistically out from the edge. Okay. Now, I hit F12. This time it's going to be 1% of the height. I'm also going to go ahead and select this little trio here and shrink from top and bottom so that they're not quite as... Actually, I do need to weld these. Mm. Okay, select those, weld, select these, weld. Okay, the reason being is because of how I'm going to have to sharpen the whole thing. Alright, I'm going to select these. I'm going to X scale them a little bit. Then I'm going to select the tip. And we want this to look like an even blend, so we're going to need to pull this out more. There we go. Oh, shnikes. The whole nonsense. I forgot about the cut. Edit, undo scale. Edit, undo select. Edit, undo select. Edit, undo scale. Undo extrude. Yeah. Because I forgot 
to turn off here. But before I do all of this, let's go ahead, select those, and weld them. Because that'll be able to skip step. Now I extrude. And that's about right. So, F12, Y of 1%. i got to make sure that I'm in a point where Y is up and down. And now I'm going to come up here. Pull that out. I'm going to come here and pull them forward. Then here, I'm going to pull them back and expand them out. So that keeps this whole loop there. Now we're going to add a smooth level just because. Collapse all. The next thing we've got to do is we've got to give it a nice, uh, what's called a distal taper. It's not Im as important in the real world, but really it actually needs a full taper. Really give that look. No. Okay, we're going to now select here. We're going to shrink it in. also going to select here we're going to connect we're going to connect further closer to that edge so it's nearly the same size and pull it back to here we're also then going to grab all of this and pull it forward once again we want to kind of emphasize that leaf shape that we've got okay now the next thing that we've got to do We'll select here and loop and then deselect here actually let's go ahead and deselect here and then select these again all right okay select these loop Select here and not these. Then we're going to select here, here, and here, and here. Then here, here, and here. I better also come up here and select these tiny bits here. Now, I'm going to chamfer it. Oh, that's a lot of chamfering, so we're going to change that to 0 .001. Okay, that sharpens those edges. Next thing I got to do is I got to come in here. Okay. I don't think I need to worry about those. Okay, so now when I mesh smooth, oops. Okay, it's so delete my button, the parameter change, undo add modifier, undo chamfer, because I forgot the edges here, and I deselect that, that, that. And that. Now let's go ahead and select here because we're going to go ahead and just make this a, a notch and not a curve. Chamfer 0 0.001. Okay. Now let's zoom out a little. Mesh smooth. And that is our spear blade. And comparing it in scale, it's not too bad. It could be a little wider at the uh, at this part here. 
so it's just to make it more dramatic, more fantasy. Okay. Now we hit Mesh Smooth. And we have our blade. Now the blade's not enough. We need something fancier than that for Roland. It is 8.30 already. That's not too bad. I might decide to skip the sword on the hip. What I'm going to add is wings. That is true, Andy. A pennant would be excellent. But I was going to put I'm going to put wings up top and then right below the wings I'll make a pennant. But I'll do the pennant in Dad Studio. I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so for the wings, the way I'm going to handle these guys is I'm going to make a box. And this box is going to be from the ferrule up to the front edge of the blade and out. Now the thing is I need to move this out to here. I could actually make it a lot a lot shorter. But eh. I'll pull this up to there. And we're going to convert to a double poly, so yeah, let's go ahead. We're going to move these vertexes now. What's going to happen is I'm going to bend them. I actually need to make that a little bit shorter. And this one a little bit closer. I don't want to make them too ridiculous. But in many ways they will be similar to the uh, the ends of a boar spear. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select here, I'm going to connect, and I'm going to use this slider to make it closer to that edge. And then just to make sure that it's even, I'm going to grab here and kind of pull it out until it's an even in thickness from here to here. Now, I select all the ones from the side, and I'm going to do something similar to that edge. Although, I need to be a little bit further. Although here, I'm going to do it by selecting these, these edges. And pull them out until it's an even thickness. I'm also going to pull it out that way, so that there's a bend in it. Okay, now there's going to be one more connection this way with right smack dab. Not Well, not smack dab in the middle, but close to the upper middle. And then I'm going to select here, and I'm going to connect it a whole bunch of times. until they are actually thinner than I would have as a feather, per se. And an odd number is great. Okay. Now. Step one. I'm going to select all the... I'm going to select the edges here. And he, well, yeah, got to be careful here. Make sure I don't go over-selecting. And that means, yeah, okay. Now I'm going to extrude local normal and shrink down, not 10 millimeters. It's going to be a lot less than 10. Okay, now I'm going to deselect all but this bottom one here because I want to move this to make sure it's in an even position. Okay, now 
I'm going to select two at a time, like this. And I'm going to extrude local normal a slightly smaller amount. Then I'm going to select alternating here. Oh, I just I screwed up. See right there? Yeah, there we go. Okay, then I'm going to select these. And extrude, extrude them the same amount. Then I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to alternate and go and, and skip over. So that it's not in the same sections. And I'm going to extrude the same amount. but then I'm going to shrink them a little. Bring this back to there. F12, 95%. I'll show you why in just a second. Then I'm going to select the alternators here. I'm going to extrude the usual amount, except and then 95%. Now I'm going to go ahead and reselect these feathers. Yes, they're feathers. And by holding control when I click here, it converts it to vertexes. I'm then going to deselect those. And I'm going to pull these down. Yeah, down. Up there. Okay. Now I go back, without holding control, I go back. I hit control and select, and I deselect the bottom ones. And I'm going to make them stick out a bit more. Okay. Now, I'm going to do something similar, but I'm going to do it with these guys. And by hitting control and deselecting the upper vertexes on the on these three point, and I'm going to shrink them down until they're almost there. Okay. Now I'm actually going to select all of them. And I'm going to click Grow. Okay. And then I'm going to click Shrink. And then I'm going to click Hide Selected. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and select all of this. And Hide Selected. The next thing I'm going to do is, now that I've done that, I can have an easier time of selecting here, here, and here. Then I'm going to show all, unhide all, and I'm going to loop now. Okay. Excellent. Now I am going to chamfer all of them at point zero zero one. Etc. 
accept. Now, what's going to happen when I hit Mesh Smooth? Actually, let me go ahead, select them all, and shrink them until they are actually inside the blade. Yeah. Now, can anyone tell me what's going to happen when I hit Mesh Smooth on this sucker? Well, let's find out. Okay, interesting. But if we hit with relax ahead of time, oh, we lose our feathers. Okay, so we're going to select these vertexes and these vertexes. You might remember them. Those are the ones that are the ends of the feathers make them even more outrageously out of the way. Yeah, more blatantly feathers. Last thing we need to do is we need to go ahead, we're gonna give a single connection down the center line. A single, not 23. Okay, and then We're going to select from here, just so I can see. Okay, that's where it ends. So we're going to select all of these. And we're going to bring them down this way. And we're going to bring them over. Make them a little bit wider this way. A little bit more that way. Yeah. Now we hit Mesh Smooth. And we have our basic wing shape, but it's not enough. So, collapse. What we need to do now, let's move the pivot. No, the pivot is probably good where it is. We're going to go to Bend. Okay, no, no, we need to move the pivot. Affect the pivot. By moving it closer to the edge in the direction that we're bending it, it's going to bend longer. Okay, bend. There we go. Collapse all. Then we're going to move it back a bit until it's resting right like that. No, about... Let's move it back to about there. <clears throat> okay, and if we hit relax... We lose our feathers, so no. No, no relaxing. Actually, what if we hit relax... And then push. No, it looks better like that. Okay, now we need to make sure that vertically it's at 15.999. We need to go ahead and shrink it just a tad because it's still poking through right there. So we're going to shrink it this way just a tad. Okay. And then we need to move the, the uh, center negative 13.22 is it 228 yes yeah, 228 okay now we go ahead and we mirror it copy okay now the problem with mirroring is that this side isn't really mirrored it's scaled negative and we hit normal collapse I'm going to select our rule again. I'm then going to attach these pieces here. 
And that's our spear blade. Looks nice and fancy, don't it? Uh, what I'm going to do for the handle is I'm going to do some sculpting on it later. Alright, so that's our spear. We need to take the blade and rotate it 45 degrees. I'm pulling out so I can easily see the gizmo and the numbers above the gizmo. 45 degrees, okay. There we go. That is our Roland, our Spear of Roland. Actually, we prob probably might be a good idea just to pull it out just a little bit more to make it more obvious that it's on A. Also, let's go ahead and take this last one here. Loop. We're going to scale it by 99.1. 99, no, 100.01. Okay. And then we're going to chamfer it 0 0.01. Make it an even sharper saw blend there. And the end result, we're going to give it one more mesh smooth. Okay. Now that is our basic Roland Spear. I'm probably going to do things like add a gem in the base and that when it comes time to sculpt. File. Export selected. This is going to... 3D Printing Home, Meshes, Resculpt... No, no, Titans of Legend. Uh, Farragut. Props. You'll notice I don't have Farragut started yet. Wavefront OBJ. Roland Spear. Okay. Now, oh look, we're in Dad's studio. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load in just a regular spear and then delete it. Why? Because that gets the hand in position. File, import. No, we don't want that. We want to be in Titans of Legend and Farragut. Props. Roland Spear. And we're going to take Roland Spear and parent it to his hand. Okay. <clears throat> now, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to open his mouth a bit because he's just, he's Shouting a war cry at Farragut. And he'll probably be like like that. I am Roland, I am challenging you. So the first thing we do is we need a lower bot a lower torso. Um he's probably not gonna the hips gonna need to bend and twist a little just a little bit a little bit forward because he's arching his back side to side oh. yeah side to side a little bit towards the back leg bend a little bit more Okay, now to make sure that we're going to get everything in the right spots, we're going to import a base. And we're going to use the Rocky base because he's fighting in a battlefield outside of, of a city and it's probably been. Now we get a front view. And we're going to 
drop this down until it's under ground. Well, let's pull up a little bit. And then we're going to hide it. Okay, now we need to do... We're going to hide the sphere for posing purposes. We need to do the base. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in this leg a little bit and bring in this leg a little bit, just a little. We want him standing tall and proud. Also, let's go ahead and lock that side to side. I really should go back one of these days and lock the side to sides for the forearms and shins and resave it that way. Okay, now, left view, frame, as we can see, that leg, that, that foot, we need to now, ah, pin translation, pin rotation. go. Now we're going to move it up and forward a bit. We're going to twist this leg just a little bit. We're going to move the foot back to here. That's too far, rotated-wise. And then we're going to pin this one's translation and rotation because we now take that thigh, and by rotating it, we change the apparent angle of that knee. Okay, we now have to go to the right view, and let's ro rotate it till it's flat, and a little bit that. there. Now we're going to bring it up. Well, oh, I see. What the heck? All right, unpin all. Okay. Okay. Left view. What is left view? Perspective view. All right. Yeah, the, the one of the hardest things to do is getting your feet looking Correct. And that actually might be too big for the... No, it's not too big for the base. Now let's go ahead and use this to move the base and do approximately the right... And then we're going to spin it just random. Okay, now... We can take it and move it up so that the feet are actually, you know, in full contact with the base. 
we have our lower torso and our base in place. Now we got to deal with the upper torso. So we're going to twist the chest and hip, uh, tw chest and abdomen back like that. We're going to side to side that way. We're going to bend the chest back and only the chest. And what that does is our chest and our hips are now not parallel to each other at all, nor are they parallel to the ground. We're going to side to side the head, and he's going to turn, look in that direction, away from his spear. Okay, then we're going to, let's go ahead and just move this to a circle. Bend it out. We're going to go back just a little bit with the shoulder. Okay, now we're going to bend the shoulder up. We're going to twist. We're going to bend the elbow just a little. Actually, we can go ahead and bend that back down and twist it some more. Now we're going to twist the forearm and we're going to go side to side with that. Now let's see, how is it? You know, I think we may have made this a bit too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Z-scale it. And I'm going to Z-translate it. Oh, it's a bit too much. Eh. Let's unbend it. I know. Let's go ahead and do it like this. until it's open up. There we go. Now, if you were going to actually play D&D &D with this figure as your paladin, you wouldn't actually call this a spear. You would call it a glaive. Yes, yet another one of the myriad of, of, of polearm types when they only give us three types of sword. Well, a little bit more than three types of sword, but you know what I mean. They ignored one of the most common sword types, but gave us all sorts of polearm types. Okay, there we go. That's good. And now we got to do the left arm. And what we're going to do with the left arm is it's going to also be coming up, but coming forward a little. bring it down just a little and twist it a bit like that then bring the arm and bend it out and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bend the joints for the fingers and make a fist but when it comes time I'm going to pull the index out. Okay. I'm going to pull it out, bend it down, pull it out a little bit more, bend the thumb. And then I'm going to cheat a little and shorten that part of the thumb to pull it into, yeah. 
And so this is our pose for Roland. Now the thing is, Roland is a hero. So one of the things that we're going to do with him, we're going to use a modifier for muscular, just like we did with Beowulf, but not quite as large. Just enough to point out, yes, he's a tough, mighty warrior. We're not going to scale him up the way we did Beowulf. He was not known for being very large. Now, we need to add a couple clothing bits. We need to add the tunic skirt. And we need to add the breastplate. We need to add the... Where is it? Sabatons. And we need to add gauntlets. No, we don't need the gauntlets. I hate those gauntlets. Why did I make them? Um, leg plates. And I think I made hip plates too. Yeah, but those hip plates don't work. Not for this character. Okay. Now, do I have arm plates? No, I don't. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select both thighs to make sure I have them selectable. I'm going to the tunic skirt and going to be doing my little anti-twist. What that means is <coughs> the left thigh is twisted 18.51. So the left eye of the tunic will be negative 18.51. Then the right thigh is 44.9. So the right thigh of the tunic will be positive 44.9. Also going to now if I side to side it a bit more and bend it a bit more I can cover up much of the uh, bits and pieces here in the same way if I side to side it a bit more and bend it a little bit more yeah now the rest of the armor we're just gonna take from the fit sculpt from the figure So, let's go ahead. <coughs> this is Roland. We're going to keep that wing motif in the armor and everything else we do to him. Uh, we're not going to give him a helmet because we want, you know, he's the main character. His face must be free. What helmet? No. Okay, do I have hair? That is good enough. Uh, do I have male hair? No, oh, just the ponytail. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hide the spear, the base, the leg plates, sabatons, breastplate, and tunic skirt as usual. Now, file, export, oh, we take this into Titans of Legend, Farragut, new folder, we're gonna call this one Roland. Oops. Body, or yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we're going to hide him. We're going to make the spear visible. File. Export. Spear. And the spear is invisible. Now, skirt. Breast. Skirt and breastplate. And sabatons. We're going to make go simultaneously. File. Export. 
close a one. Okay, then we're going to make the leg plates. File, export, close O2. Accept. And then the base. File, export, base. Accept. Now we go to ZBrush and we import from Titans of Legend, Farragut, Roland, Body. And here's his basic pose. Now, as usual, we need to... Up Actually, while I'm thinking about it, so I don't forget, I'm going to shrink the mouse and smooth out the inner mouth. so that we don't have to worry about this later in the sculpt when it becomes much more difficult because it's a higher polygon count. And we have his open mouth is now mostly just open. It's not so difficult and it's not going to be so difficult to sculpt. Alright, to, to print. Okay, now append polymesh import Let's view by list. Let's make this easier. Uh, close one. Import close two. Append polymesh. Import close three. Oh, sorry. Spear. Okay, and then append polymesh. Import base. We're going to hide the base in the sphere. Or, you know, and we're going to be focusing on the body and the clo clothing one. So first thing that we do for the body is we go ahead and we subdivide it a couple times and then we're going to dynamize it 768. Click. Okay. Now most of what we're going to do here is we're going to smooth out this area here and right here at the shoulder. The reason being is not only do we want to get rid of that one little arch, but we also have to make room for the fact that there's going to be armor here. And so we're also going to smooth out the shoulder back here. And then I hit one a few times, a couple more times. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to smooth that out. We also need to smooth this out because we need to pull this out. And then we need to smooth it. And one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Ah, and here. Okay. Until it comes time to do actual sculpting, there's not much else we need to do to the body. So we're going to go ahead, go down to the clothes. And we're going to subdivide them a couple times. And then we're going to grab the move brush. Actually, make it move topological so we don't move anything we don't want to. Make the brush a, bit, a little bit bigger. Grab this corner and pull it into the chest. Grab over here, pull it in. Grab back here and pull it up. Okay. Everything else is pretty much cheap. Let's go ahead and actually let's grab this and pull it back. And then in. This 
Let's pull this one back through there. And in. Back through there. And in. Okay. Then we're going to grab this and pull it down. Oh. Whoopsie. Grab this. We're going to pull it down a bit more because it's going to end up being covering up the uh, abs. And we're going to smooth a little. Okay. Now we go ahead, we go back up to the body, and we merge down. And yes, it's always okay. Go back to geometry, dynamesh. This is the easy part here, by the way. Now we're going to smooth out where it meets the edges here. Okay, and then around. And then we're going to do the butt. Doing the butt. Ow. And here. And then here. Okay. Now we come up and we're going to do the same thing to the sabatons, both here and down here. Okay, bring it around, smooth that out, smooth that out, frame, okay. Now, <clears throat> we go ahead and we're going to make the closed two visible, the, the leg plates, and we're going to use the move topological brush, of the, well, what am I doing, it's 51, with a much larger draw size, I'm going to start dragging these inside the armor skirt. This is actually going to be one of the last things that we include. Okay. We're going to go ahead and dynamesh it. Or not dynamesh, but subdivide it a little bit. Just to make sure it looks smooth. Okay, so for right now, this is all the clothing that we've actually done on him. Well, guess what that means? That means we got to do more. So we got to give him an actual breastplate and pauldrons and arm plates. And then we're going to do some mail on... No, hip... Let's do some hip plates on the skirt first. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to him. He's right now at 602,000. Well, guess what? We need to go ahead and subdivide it to get some more accurate and fancier armor plate areas. So what we're going to do we're going to smooth out this area just a little bit more. We're gonna just set things if we're gonna hit this. We're gonna shrink the mouse. And we are going to draw change the focal shift. And we're going to draw on Oh yeah, I forgot to... Ah, I missed some parts of that. So let's go ahead and... Pull it in. I thought I had missed some. Uh, 
there we go. Anyway, let's draw on our shape, which is going to be actually a wing shape. I'm going to have to adjust this as I go. And it's going to come down. Out, back in like that. And Actually, Okay. Okay. We're going to do something similar over here, but now that I've got my basic shape, I can simplify it and do it faster. from here come oh yeah it needs to be thicker here because of the pinions okay It's going to come up and down. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to extract this at 0 0.025. Accept. Draw to deselect and draw to deselect and go back to this and we're going to Dynamesh 256. And we're going to frame. We're going to subdivide it. Next thing that we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn it into wings. We're going to use slash tool for that. And again, this is not going to turn them into wings. It's going to turn them into stylized wings. Okay, so we're going to turn off lazy mouse for this. And the first thing that we're going to do, drop that intensity down to about 14. And we need to make it a little bit bigger. And it's going to come around from here. Up to there. And then... The next thing is we're going to go ahead and we're going to start drawing on where the feathers are. Okay, and then we're just going to kind of meet it halfway. until we get to here and then it's going to be like this and then pinions out to here and 
Then we're going to do something similar here. We're going to come around. The reason we're putting the wing motif on him is because since he's not going to be writing his uh, hippogriff, we're going to have the griff be symbolically with him in the bird theme of his armor. And the fact that it also would give it an almost angelic look for your typical paladin is just pure coincidence, I swear. If you're not aware, what I'm doing here is I'm actually making a Kickstarter the concept being Giants of Myth and Legend with stats for 5th edition D&D. And really and truly all of them need to kind of have something about them that makes them usable for something other than the primary definitions. And that usually means things like additional figures. Um, in the case of Grendel, that it meant Beowulf. So in the case of Farragut, that means Roland. Now the thing is, Grendel himself can be used as a generic troll if you wanted to. Which means that Beowulf can be used as a generic barbarian. So for the same purpose, good old Roland here will be able to be used as a generic paladin. So the next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to go to standard brush and shrink it. So that this will be our standard drawing. I'm going to do pauldrons. And these pauldrons will come very far into the chest. At least for the upper part of them. And very far into the back. Because guess what? they're also going to have wings drawn on them. Okay. One thing I don't like about much many of the Warhammer sculpts is that while they might have huge pauldrons, they're they're ridiculously huge pauldrons, and that's bled over into the uh, Age of Sigmar. with the Sigmar Marines, or, 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 sorry, Stormcast Eternals. Sigmar Marines. Okay, there we go. Now these are going to be extruded out as 0.035. draw, draw, <clears throat> and then we're going to dynamesh at 256, and then we're going to actually come in and smooth out this area a little, kind of pull, give it a little bit of a pull. And this area. 
kind of pull it a little bit smoother. Actually, what we need to do is we need to reduce that quite a lot. And just come in and be a bit more refined about it. Actually, that's too much. Yeah, there we go. Especially right in here. And right <coughs> back here. next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the move tool. Move topological. No. We're going to smooth here. And then we're going to smooth here. <coughs> okay. Make the move tool a little bit bigger. Pull that up. And now, we're going to grab the edges of it, make it much bigger, pull the edges all the way up a bit. More of a... Okay, frame. Now we're going to make those into wings. If you have to give it a historical Carolingian motif, you could always say that it represents the, the Holy Spirit or angels or something. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Holy Spirit, it's also called the Holy Ghost, by, especially by older Catholics. And it's the concept that it's the essence of God without the corporeality or the absolute mind. Anyway, so yeah. So now we're going to subdivide it a couple times. And there we go, 880, that should be good. Bye, Kim! Well, at least you know I'll be showing it off in... in yeah. Now I'm going to start off with the slash tool, and I'm actually going to... Actually, no, not the slash tool. We're going to go for the orb cracks brush this time. We're going to leave lazy mouse on, but increase the radius, and we're going to increase the depth a bit. And we're just going to cut straight down the center. No, nope, we need it a little bit bigger. A little bit deeper. So we're going to do it. And then two. Same token, we're going over here. We're going to draw from here to there. Okay, now we go back to slash. And we're going to basically just draw in oh, no, we need it a lot deeper than that. And we're going to make it a little bit bigger. We're going to come around, we're going to just basically draw in like that. And then one, two, Three, four. I'm gonna make feathers.
And no, because I angled the whole thing. I was not flat on. Or close to flat on. Let's do it like this. And that looks uh, like I was way too deep. Yes, there is frequently times where the Control Z key is your friend. So let's drop this back down from 23 to 16. Okay, so we're going to begin here. And now we're just continuing to add our little feathered bits to our little nightly bur bird brain here. You realize it's entirely possible that I might not finish this one in one night. Because I've just put too much on my plate. Close to getting onto this side now. And we're gonna do the. No. Okay, and then here.
Okay. Now, we're uh, we're going to Dynamesh them again. This time at 5.12. No, we're not. Not at 5.12. At 7.68. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now, we go back to him. Gonna make, we're going to use transparency, and we're going to just sculpt on what are called the lames. Lames are not what they sound like. They're not lame. They're lower. They're the lower part protectors for things like pauldrons and hip plates. Mm. I am now no longer dying of dehydration. Now these won't be very decorative. I'm of the mindset that really and truly you should leave spots open. So, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to draw on, basically, coming out of here, a triangular piece. And we're going to sharpen it like that. Uh, that was not good. I'm going to put one on the other side, too. Now one thing to remember is I am still going to give him a male hauberk. that it's continuing okay now these are going to be extracted at point zero two except for all come back up to here draw and we're going to make these visible now the thing that we're going to do with these ones is we're going to give them trim. How are we going to do that, you might ask? Simple. I go to the Curve Tube brush. It's one of the default brushes in ZBrush. I go to the Curve, Functions, Uncheck Polygroups and Creased Edges, Leave Border On, and a Frame Mesh. Oh, I know. I know why, because I forgot to... Yeah, that's what needs it. Hello? Oh, it is polygroups I need to worry about. No, it's not. Alright, hide these guys. There we go. It's creased edges. And I'm going to shrink this down to about 6. And I click. Oh, look. I've got trim. Come back over to this side. And... Oh, look. i got trim. Alright, so now i got to extract them out before I can keep them. So, split unmasked parts. Okay, then do this one. Split unmasked parts. And put him back on. And we're going to click in the middle. Cause I we're going to shrink, we're going to zoom in and click in the middle to deselect, to get rid of the, the uh, pipes. All right. So that gives us our lames. And we're going to merge down the lames with the trim. 
and we're going to dynamix it at 256. And if that doesn't work, and it didn't, we're going to dynamix it at 512. Yeah, there we go. Now we need to make the breastplate. We're going to hide the the pauldrons in that and the hip plates. Actually, no. Let's go ahead and make and, and bring all these into one sub tool. So merge down. Hide those armor plates, and we're going to make our breastplate. Now the way we're going to do it is first we're going to make the actual upper chest piece. So we go back to standard and we're going to draw on where the armor will be. Okay, close this out. And that's that. We're going to go ahead and give him a little bit more neck space down here. Yes, I know. I know that's a bad thing. I know it won't be as protective. You know, he does he has no gorget. But this is stylized fantasy. So, yeah. It's protective enough. He's probably... Well... I would say that the reason he has no gorget is because he took it off with his helmet to yell at Farragut. He's got it. He's just yanked it off so he can bellow a bit better. He's also going to have a bit of a weird upper neck protector on the back of his breastplate. It will be articulated, don't worry. I'm right now talking to all those people who prefer realistic armor in their fantasy. Which there's actually a thankfully surprisingly high amount of. And we're coming around. Coming around the left when we come. Now the thing is, the breastplate will be made out of two parts. Uh, breastplate and the waist plate and this will be split okay there will be a gap between on top and bottom and let's blend that over okay now this will be extracted to 0.02 Because we need to have more down here. It's too wide on the left side and not wide enough on the right. There we go. Let's check the back. Okay, we need to kind of cut in on the back. Obviously, in reality, the armor. Except. Draw. Draw. Now we're going to frame this. We're going to turn off these just to look at the breastplate as we're doing this. Okay, so what we're going to do. We're going back down to geometry. We are going to 
dyna we're gonna dynamesh 512. Doesn't have a lot, but hey. Then we're going to Z remesh. Adaptive size 100. Target poly count 0.1. Hopefully that will keep our creased edges while giving us a much more abstract shape. Okay, it did exactly what I was hoping it would do. There we go. Subdivide a couple times. Oh, we gotta do it one more. Okay. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We're gonna hide these. Now, we're gonna go ahead, we're not gonna add any trim because next up is the waste plate. Now the waste plate, what we're gonna do with it, we're gonna start like this. His waste plate is gonna be wings. Okay, then. Okay. We're going to bring it around, and we're going to cut a seam in when it comes time. So we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to extract it out at a point zero three five. Extract. Accept. Draw. Let's turn off that. And just for the heck of it, let's turn on that. To do now, we're gonna grab him, uh, him, it. We're gonna dynamesh DVT6. We're then gonna use the move topological tool and we're gonna kind of start pulling down. At the same time, kind of pulling in a little. And we're also going to try and make this as even as possible. And no, too strong of a smooth. Eh. frame out. Okay, much better. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're going to back to Z remesher, adapt size 100, target size 1, Z remesh. They're going to turn half. Z remesh. And one more. Okay, now, we're now going to subdivide it a couple times. 
couple more. Okay, excellent. Now we're going to draw on what's going to be. Oh, we need to Dynamax it. Dynamax. Subdivide. One more. One more. Okay. Now we're going to go to the Orb Crack Brush. I'm going to draw down the center of it. And then. We're going to do the same in the back. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the slash brush because it has an, a, a different look <coughs> than the orb crack brush. And we're going to use that to kind of draw on a division here and a division here. And what we're going to do then is we're going to draw that and draw up and once again we're going to draw in our feathers Whoop. Then we're going to use inflate, and we're going to kind of inflate a little bit up here, and smooth it. Make it a little bit bigger because we want to Now we're going to go back to our breastplate. And here, what we're going to do, we're going to use the slash tool, but on add much lower and a good bit larger. We're going to exaggerate some of the musculature here. Some of the digs in and out to kind of emphasize that it is armor and not the real thing. Kind of like what the, uh, the old Roman armors used to do. Okay, so that is our current state of affairs at 10 o'clock at night. I've got him probably about two-thirds done. And that's without the pennant, without a cloak, without hair. That's stuff that we're all going to be adding next week. Okay. Okay. Alrighty, it is 10 o'clock at night. It's a little early, I realize, but it's been a busy week. So, 
Tuesday, we will continue this. We will have Roland, the ultimate paladin, complete. So, as usual, this is my hand. There are many like it, but this one is mine. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, count down from 5 to 1 and probably end up doing something kind of goofy when I get to 1 just because, you know, I, I, I'm like that. But this is a 5. Oh, don't forget, start, Sundays from now on, the evening broadcast will always be at 8 o'clock. This gives me a gap that I can actually get a nap in between the two shows. Okay. So, that's going to be five. A four. A three. Two. All around. Top, 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 top. Bye, bye.